Hey everyone, this is Mike and welcome back to Thinking Your Way to Happiness. Today we're going to talk about a self-defeating belief. And the self-defeating belief is performance perfectionism. Now we've been talking about cognitive distortions like mind reading and fortune telling and overgeneralizing. The difference between the two is that a cognitive distortion is triggered by an event, some situation or adversity, and we think about it. And if our thoughts are distorted, like mind reading, we will have a more severe negative emotion, like anxiety or depression. Self-defeating beliefs are not triggered by events or situations. They are ways of thinking about ourselves that are 24-7. We just always think this way about ourselves. Nothing sets them off, nothing triggers them. And there's still a distortion, but they're a certain type of distortion. They're a little deeper, a little bit more insidious, and they usually stem from childhood. Um, but there's still a distortion, we dispute them the same way. So we will be focusing on performance perfectionism. Now, performance perfectionism is when a person believes that they should or must never fail or make a mistake. Um, many people are like that, right? I should never make a mistake, never do anything wrong. I must perform perfectly. I must do everything I do must be perfect. Um, and as you can imagine, this is a very debilitating belief. This perfectionism that many people have. Is, uh, is very devastating to a person's self-esteem and self-confidence and how they interact and feel about themselves. And um, one of the techniques is uh, challenging the shoulds. Uh, these are things, these are dogmatic, inflexible demands uh, about a way things should be. And usually it's literally the shoulds. I should do this, or I must, or I ought to, or I need to. Uh, very often it's called the tyranny of the shoulds. And this is just an example of this very dogmatic demand. And what we want to do is replace that with uh, wants and preferences. I want to be different. I would like to be, I would prefer to be, I wish to be, I desire to be, but there's no reason I must. So the antidote to perfectionism, I should be perfect at this situation, is not, is not, is that I wish I was better at this. I would desire to be perfect, but nobody's perfect. Uh, I want to do it 100%, or at least, if not perfect, at least close. But there's no reason I must. There's no reason I should. I just want to. Um, and this will reduce the demand. Because the problem is, if you demand something, I must do it, and then it doesn't happen, what are you left with? You've just demanded you must do it. Um, you know, it reminds me of that old joke from Robin Williams, who said, uh, you know, in, in, in England, the police don't carry guns. And, you know, in the old, there's the American expression, um, stop or I'll shoot, right? That, that kind of thing. And he was joking. He said, what do they do in England? Stop or I'll say stop again, right? Because when all you have is stop, there's nothing you can do. What else are you going to do? Stop and if they don't, what, if they, what are you going to do then? So same, same thing here. Uh, I must do it. And if you don't, then what? But if you say, I wish I did it, I would prefer to do it, and then it doesn't happen, you say, well, I didn't demand it had to happen. I just wanted it to. I just wished it would. And it didn't, and it's not what I want, but it's okay, I can live with it. So that's the um, self-defeating belief of performance perfectionism and the intervention of challenging the shoulds or these dogmatic demands. Hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.